Hello, welcome to another book review on the Sebelsan version channel. Today are the first video in a little two-part series about books by the same author about the land and air war in the South Pacific during World War II. The first of those two videos is about the book Touched with Fire, The Land War in the South Pacific by Eric M. Bergerot. And I'm hope, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly or that I'm close, but I don't know. I'm sorry if I butchered it. Yes! Touch with Fire is 566 or some 566 pages long, of which 532 or thereabouts are the real um, contents of the book and the rest, uh, or a bit more, I think, actually, um, is uh, some maps, uh, notes and uh, the usual extra stuff. I got it for about 10 euros and I got the, uh, a paperback version from the British branch of uh, Penguin Books. So there seems to be an American and a British version, or seems to have been an American and a British version, because the book was first, first <laughs> published in 1996. So um, yeah, it's already quite cheap, it's already quite good. And as you can see, it's not a, the biggest book in the world, so um, you can take it with you while traveling and uh, that shouldn't be a problem. The second book in the series, which you can see in the, the background, uh, Fire in the Sky, is uh, quite a bit bigger and that could make uh, traveling with it a bit more difficult. Touch with Fire deals with um, a period in the Second World War in the South Pacific in which after the Japanese had attacked Pearl Harbor and had um, simultaneously, simultaneously, simultaneously attacked uh, the Philippines and the British holdings and then had gone on to uh, the Dutch East Indies. Um, that's where Touch with Fire then kicks in and uh, when the Japanese arrive, so to speak, on the doorstep of Australia itself, when they uh, invaded uh, parts of New Guinea, when they tried to get to uh, Port Moresby on the other side on the, of, of a mountain range uh, on the Australian side of New Guinea, Port Moresby, um, and then when the Americans and the, the British, sorry, not the British, when the Americans and the Australians, the ANZAC, for, ANZAC forces, so-called uh, ANZAC, Australian and New Zealand forces, then uh, stopped them after heavy fighting and, and holding on by a threat um, and then, yeah, slowly pushing them back over New Guinea and then landing in, in the Solomons and Goodall Canal and then pushing them up the island chain of the Solomons towards the big fortress of uh, the Japanese in that region, the island of Rabaul or the city of Rabaul um, on the island of, I think, New Georgia, if I'm not mistaken. There's, there are many, many good maps in here and they show you uh, the names of the places and then you can uh, correct me in the comments. This book is um, interesting, interesting because it provides a lot of context. Um, the it's not operational history per se, it's not on this date that happened and then there's a, an Excel sheet uh, written out in book form which tells you what happened day by day. Um, he took the approach, or the author took the approach, of um, looking at s several different aspects one by one. Yes, he gives an overview about the operations and the, the space and time in, them in which they happened, but um, for example, he's got one chapter about the climate, uh, about the weaponry, weaponry used by the uh, different sides, um, transport, logistics, and, and then they goes, uh, does a deep dive or a deep air dive in each of those topics, uh, and then moves on to another one and interconnects them all quite nicely, which is very nice for me because I quite like context and I quite like hearing about all this stuff, and it was very interesting to me to learn about this little, or at least for me, little known um, theatre of World War II, maybe for European it's different than for an American or for an Australian certainly, but for me it was a, a, a lot of new information, a lot of new context. For example, that the climate um, and the geography played such a big role in this campaign and that, for example, the, the jungle in itself or the climate and then the environment there in itself was a real killer for all the sites involved and that the campaigns there were very, very difficult for those people. It's a, quite astounding what they uh, managed to do both sides. 
in total, um, all this and all this approach with all the uh, different topics and all the different aspects that he looks at gives a very good all-around picture about operations and that theater, about the entire theater and, and the very important campaign that was uh, fought there uh, in the period when uh, the allies were just getting back, back on their foot or were just getting on their foot and then starting to push back the Japanese um, to eventual victory and uh, yeah. I think it's honestly it's really nice. Positive and negative stuff about this book, I cannot really find, well, I couldn't really remember. It's a bit, uh, it's been some one or two years since I read this. I can't really remember any very negative points that I had about this book. Um, positive points is it's good to read, it's well written, you can read it quite nicely. It's got a lot of context, as I said, and I really, really like context. <laughs> it's very important. Um, there's a lot info about this lesser known theater and uh, influence of environment which is very important and therefore very important to understand what happened there. Another very nice point about this book is that the author almost always interweaves uh, personal accounts, personal stories, short bits of, of uh, quotes into his uh, story. So we hear from the soldiers themselves who fought uh, how they perceived a certain aspect like airdropping in munitions or fighting Japanese in, uh, in the swamp. And that really gives a personal connection to, to the story and takes it one step back from just being some academical work of, uh, of, of art and just, you know, being more down to the ground, quite literally often. I think this book is a very good read for everybody who's really interested in military history and especially wants to get a lot more context about the operations in that theater of World War II in the South Pacific. Because if you're really interested, then all those bits of, of information about climate and, and transportation and so on uh, help you to understand maybe other books that you're reading about specific campaigns like the Kokoda Trail or uh, Good Al Canal. Because then you have a bigger picture and you can look on the other information or that you've maybe received uh, in a new light, in a different light. No. So, to summarize, I think this is a very good book to read up on the land war in the South Pacific and get a lot of context about what happened in that very important, but somehow I think a bit underrepresented theater of the Second World War. It's also quite cheap on the internet, so you can get it there and uh, enjoy it. Um, one part that is omitted from the book, or it's not totally omitted, but uh, not gone into in um, the depth that would have been required or is required maybe, is the air war in the South Pacific. And uh, that's why the author what wrote the second book, um, Fire in the Sky, uh, about the air war in the South Pacific. And I'm currently reading that book and when, once I'm finished I will also do a review about that book. So if you would like to read more about the same subject matter, I can, I think, already uh, endorse uh, Fire in the Sky. You can read something about uh, the Air War in the South Pacific. And if you want to learn more about the Japanese Navy, I can recommend the book Kai Doom, which I've also done a video on, and the, about the Imperial Japanese Navy and its history, which is also, of course, important for the campaign in the South Pacific and the, bo the book uh, Sunburst, which is about the history of the Imperial Japanese Naval Air Arm, which is of course also very important for this, uh, this theater of operations. So I've also got a book on that one, so if you like, you can also check out those videos. Thank you very much for watching, have a nice day and have fun reading.